Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler and today we're going to be talking about why star schemas are stupid. Now I know there's a there's dozens if not hundreds of articles and videos out there that extol the virtues of star schemas, but I'm going to prove unequivocally in this video why all of those other blog articles and videos are wrong, <laughs> or at least not telling the entire story. All right, and stick around to the end of this video where I'll reveal Deckler's maxim. All right, you know we all love like Roche's maxim and all those other things, all those other maxims. Well, I have my own, and I'll reveal it at the end of this video. Okay, so the concept for this video came out of this uh, forum post: data modeling star schema versus very simple flat table. And what they have is a very simple table, right? They have year, they have order ID, they have color, quantity, amount. Um, they have a very simple report, right? Um, and then they have a, uh, so there's the table, and then they have one measure, which is just the average, is the amount divided by the quantity. Um, and they're basically confused about whether they should do a star schema, like everyone says they should, or just keep with a single flat table, and they explain some of the pros and cons that they see in both of the approaches. And of course, of course my answer is just keep it simple. All right. So, but let's dig into this topic a little deeper. Um, and, and I'm gonna and show why you should just keep things simple. Okay, um, so to do that, we're going to build a single table data model and a multi-table data model. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna run these through a series of tests in terms of how long does it take, you know, to create each, you know, each one, you know, how what's the behavior like in each of the, you know, when you build the simple report and that with the the different tables, um, different semantic models, if you will. Um, and you know what? How, what's the impact on you know size? What are, are there any benefits? You know what are the negatives? We're gonna get into all of that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and create single table data model. All right, and we're going to time it. All right, we're gonna time the creation of the single table data model. Um, and this, the report we're gonna use like two slicers, one for color, one for year, and a table that had lists you know the data. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to start the timer and we're going to go up here to get data, CSV file, down here to downloads, mock data, open it up, give it a minute, hit load. Taking a little while to load. Thousand rows. Open this up, create a table visual. We'll put in order ID, color, year, amount, quantity. We'll create a slicer. We'll put in color. Copy and paste that slicer. Move it over here, pop in here, get rid of that guy, this over here, fan this down, fan out this table, and we're done. Stop. Okay, so a minute and 23 seconds, all right? And a lot of that was just waiting on Power BI to load the damn data. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for multiple tables, right? Build out our star schema, all right? And let's go ahead and first, before we do anything else, let's save this. Save it here under single table. I think I've already, single table, yep. I'll just replace it. Yep. Okay. So let's uh, flip back over to a new. We're going to start in the same place. It's just a blank report here. Reset our timer, minute and 23 seconds. Hit start, and away we go. Text CSV. Down here to downloads. Mock data, open.
Now we got to hit transform data here because we need extra tables. We can click reference here. And we can pick color. We can remove other columns. <clears throat> Rename this to color. This is our table. Repeat this process, reference. Pick year. Move other columns. Year. Close and load. OK, first thing we need to do is check, make sure. No, it did not create any relationships. Oh, oh, well, that didn't work. So let's go back and transform the data. And remove duplicates. Remove duplicates, close and load. Year, color. All right, back to here. We need a table visual. We need to expand this. We did order ID, color, year, amount, quantity, slicer. Okay, let's go here to color, add our color, copy and paste. Move this over here, move this over here, span this out, and this table visual out, and we're done. done. Okay, so two minutes and 28 seconds, not quite twice as long, um, but significantly longer, right? You're talking about e easily 50% longer in order to just create that, and I would argue you need to know quite a bit more. Right, you never had to even go into Power Query Editor with the single table data model. You just load it right up, right? Versus you have to know how to go into transform data. You need to be able to, you know, use reference and you know work with the Power Query Editor, right? Don't need to know any of that with a single table data model at all. Um, so so there's that. Now, these two models don't work the same. OK, so even though it took us longer, right, we have less functionality in the, in the multiple tables versus the single table. Why is that? Well, let's say that I click on 2024 in the single table data model. Look, I have color pink and color teal, right, because those are the only two colors that were sold in 2024. OK, now if I look at the multiple tables, I can click on 2024. Look, I still have all these colors that weren't even sold in 2024. I click on indigo, it's just not there. So this doesn't even work very well compared to a single table data model, right? In order to fix this, I need to know even more about Power BI and about how semantic models work, right? I have to go in here, click on properties, say both, and we're violating, you know, a huge rule here as far as we believe the SQL BI guys, you know, if we use both relationship directions, we're going straight to hell. Um, that's what they that's what they've said. If you use if you use both relationship direction, you're going straight to hell according to SQL BI. But guess what it does? It fixes the problem with our slicer. Where now we actually when I click on a year, it actually filters my color correctly. So I kind of have to do that in order for it to actually be usable for an end user to make any amount of sense whatsoever, right? All right, so, so far, star scheme is not looking so good. And let's go ahead and save this. Call this multiple. I don't want it downloads, I want it in here. Multiple tables, there we go. Save it. Yep, replace it. OK. Now, let's take a look at what that does to our data model size. 
the single table data model is 40 kilobits, kilobytes, and multiple days is 44 kilobytes. So it bloated our data model by 10%. So now we have a semantic model that takes longer to build, requires vastly more knowledge of Power BI in semantic modeling, and bonus, it, it bloats our data model. Okay, you know, sign me up for Star Schema for Lone Peak. What in the world, right? Makes zero amount of sense. Um, so let's go ahead and create our measure now, and we'll do maybe some performance tests on this. Grab this guy. Single table. That's before we do any of this, let's clear that. New measure. Paste this in. Mock data. Mock data. Enter. Oh. No. <laughs> stop Power BI. Just just stop. I don't I just want I just want that. I love Power BI once in a while. So helpful. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and save that so we don't lose it. Back to our multiple table. Create our new measure. Add that in. Okay, so let's go back to our single table. We'll select our table. We'll put in our average amount. Right, and we'll open up performance analyzer. Okay, so everything's clean. Start recording. All right, we're going to filter on 2024, 2023, back to 2024. Back to 2023, blue, green, pink. OK, stop recording. So let's look and see what we have. So this is for single table. DAX query is 39 seconds. DAX query is 15 seconds. Not even a DAX query. Not even a DAX query. DAX query 38 seconds. Dax query is 16 seconds. Dax query is 14 seconds, right? Let's go do that in the multiple tables. So again, we've got and add this on to our average amount here. And we're going to slow it up performance analyzer. Start recording. 2024, 2023. 2024, 2023, blue, green, and pink. Stop recording. Okay, so let's see here. 13 seconds for DAX query, 13 seconds for DAX query, no DAX query, no DAX query, 24 seconds for DAX query, 15 seconds, 17 seconds. So now, I would need to do some statistical analysis on this and probably run through a lot more tests, but on the surface, I don't really see any statistical difference between these, the results that we're getting back between these, right? The last uh, 14 seconds versus 17 seconds, 15 seconds versus 16 seconds, you know, 24 versus 38, you know, no DAX, no DAX, right? So, I mean, there's not a huge amount of difference, right? So what you're saying, you know, so again, so going back to this concept, the star schema, so, you know, okay, so it takes me longer to create it. It is far more complex in terms of what I need to know. It bloats my data model and it offers me zero performance improvement. So why are we promoting star schemas again versus flat tables? Now, <laughs> I'm sure people are saying out there is, well, Greg, your scenario is, is it's too simple. It's a very simple scenario. And so, you know, 
you're an idiot. But that's the point. Okay. The point is the vast majority of data of, of data scenarios out there that people, you know, for people that are using Power BI, the vast majority of users are extremely simple data. It's extremely simple data. All this stuff around, oh, billions of rows and you know, star schemes, it really applies to professional IT, you know, enterprise type scenarios. But the vast majority of people that use Power BI are business users coming, many of them coming from Excel are still using Excel. So none of that really applies in that situation. What they have are very simple requirements and needs. Okay, that's why they only need a single table data model. And I still argue that, you know, 80% of people that use Power BI are just business users. Okay. And that's why, in my opinion, 78% of the data models that are out there in the Power BI service are probably just single table data models. Right. So <clears throat> why make it more complicated than that? All right. So on that note, Deckler's maxim. And this isn't just Deckler's maxim for data modeling or De Deckler's maxim for Power BI. This is Deckler's maxim on everything. So what is Deckler's maxim on everything? Only introduce additional complexity if absolutely necessary. There you have it. That's all I have for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.